Hello and welcome to Runkle of the Bailey. My name is Ian Runkle. I'm a Canadian criminal defense and firearms lawyer. This will be part three of reviewing the Alec Manassian police interrogation video. Now, this is the individual charged with committing the Toronto van attack, so 10 counts of murder, 16 counts of attempted murder. Pretty serious stuff. Uh, because this is a sensitive topic, this will basically be entirely a Patreon supported video, so thank you if you want to support. Uh, We'll see, this will give us an opportunity to look at both uh, the allegations involved, what they're saying happened here, as well as police interrogation tactics. And those apply whether or not you're accused of something as serious as this. So let's, uh, let's dive right in. So continuing where we left off last time. It's just random stuff, depending on whatever you're thinking of today, or? It, you could think of it like that. Mm -hmm. And messaging, are you what, you know, what kind of conversations are you typically having on, on messenger? I don't wish to answer that. Oh, okay. All right. Um, am I to understand that you've you've had some military experience in the past? Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. Was it in, the, in Canada? I'm, I'm yes. Yeah. yeah. And uh, my dad was in the military. My dad was actually in the Navy. He uh, he joined when he was 17 years old. And in fact, he was he wasn't 18, so he had, yeah, actually had to have his parents sign off to uh, to, uh, to give him permission to join the navy. But, uh, so in the military, we have the air force, the the navy, and the, and the army. Which 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 one were you part of? Army. In the army. Okay. All right. And where did you join? Here in Toronto. Yes. Oh, really? And what made you decide to do that? Uh, I wanted to uh, try something new. I wanted to see what it was like to join infantry. Really? really? Have, you, have you thought about pursuing the military as a career? I had thought of it at the time that I had uh, joined. Right, 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 right. Okay. And, and were you thinking about doing like enlisting or were you thinking about being an officer and going through the, the officer cadet program? or what? I had you? enlisted. You enlisted. Oh, I see. Now, the investigator would almost certainly already know all of this. He's asking this in order to do more rapport building and sort of feel things out here. Uh, in terms of his own personal background, uh, that may or may not be true, the story he's telling about his dad. It seems plausible here, but uh, again, this is the sort of thing that sometimes they can make up in order to create some sense of connection with somebody. But uh, I get the sense that this, uh, this particular interrogator is probably going to be better in terms of drawing on his own personal experience. In my sort of, my estimation of police interrogations, it's tends to be more the, the rookies, the less experienced investigators who start making things up because that runs the risk that they get caught in some sort of lie and that doesn't typically go well for them. So it was in the army and what particular, like were you, what particular, I know there's a number of different, is it professions or a number of different trades? Trades, yes. Yeah. So what particular I trade was uh, infantry. Oh, infantry. So you'd be, if, if called the task, you'd be the, the fellow on the front line. Yes. Charge into the enemy and yes, just uh, get your hands dirty at yeah. the pointy end of the stick. Okay, <laughs> is that uh, is is it yeah? Uh, as per the trade description. So he's got the guy smiling here. He's got the guy sort of playing along with things. That's not a good thing if you're the person in the the chair, because if he's sort of able to play with your emotions, if he's able to put you into the emotional state that he wants you to be in. It means he's got control of the uh, the whole interrogation. Oh, okay, right now, right now. What so specifically? What so within the infantry? Did you have a particular skill that you wanted to develop, or was it just? I was interested in uh, learning how to uh, use uh, weapons, Beautiful. Spe okay. specifically uh, large guns. Now, do you think if you are charged with ten counts of murder? Do you think it's a really great idea at this stage to be telling the police interrogator, I wanted to learn how to use weapons, especially large guns, because you know that this is going to be presented to a court. Do you think that's actually helpful? I don't understand sort of where his mind is, because we saw that earlier he was refusing to answer questions about, you know, I don't want to discuss what I talk about online, but I'm going to just mention here for nothing that I really wanted to learn how to use weapons and that's why I joined the military. I don't get it. Like if you're going to selectively answer questions, which is a bad idea because 
selectively answering questions means that you're answering some questions. Why would you choose to answer this one? Oh, well, let's keep going. So large guns is in, in what? Like, uh, like such as uh, assault rifles. Oh, okay. So you're not talking about howitzers and, and uh, cannons, right? You're talking about like... Oh. Yeah, because those you can actually hold in your head. Right, right. So what type of weapons would the, uh, the military, the military be, be training their, their members in? Because you know what? I play a lot of Call of Duty. Right? Have you ever played Call of Duty? Unfortunately, that game isn't realistic. <laughs> um, however, <laughs> uh, I never, unfortunately, I never made it far enough in my basic training to uh, use guns. Uh, so I don't know what type of guns the uh, uh, military uses. Oh, okay. Now, I'm going to bet the detective has never played Call of Duty. I'm going to bet he's heard of it, but I doubt he's played it. What makes you think, you know, I thought uh, Call of Duty was real. Well, I know that the scenarios aren't realistic, but it's really like the weapons they use are realistic, aren't they? And, uh, and the camo and the, and the uniforms and stuff. Unfortunately, uh, um, the, the logistics of how the uh, weapons are fired right. uh, are not uh, realistic in real life. For oh. example, uh, there's a lot of recoil when firing a, uh, an ass assault rifle. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, no, I imagine. And you're not getting much recoil on your, you know, your, your computer, whatever. Definitely the, not. The little handheld console you're using, of course, it vibrates a little bit. But yes, he plays a lot of Call of Duty with his computer. Um, I don't know. This is what happens when people start talking about maybe things they're not that familiar with. And yeah, I, I'm kind of disappointed in the detective here, but he was doing real well. I don't think this is going to interfere a whole lot with his uh, interrogation, but uh, it could. I've seen interrogations get thrown way off track when they get sort of caught, uh, caught out in this kind of scenario. <laughs> you, do you play a call to I've played it uh, in the past. Yeah, I enjoy that. I like that. And uh, there's another one I, I really enjoy was um, um, Honor, Badge of Honor. I've yeah. actually never played that, to be honest. That was actually better. That's better than the Call of Duty. Better, Badge of Honor. It's made, it's, uh, I think Call of Duty is is uh, Microsoft, if I'm not mistaken. I, can't, I, I don't know. And, but this was another company. But it, Call it, of Duty is made by Activision. Activision, okay, right. Uh, and now, yeah, so Badge of Honor is something else. It's, it's another company. I don't know what it is, but uh, do, you, do, you, do you find yourself playing, do you play a lot of, a lot of video games? A guy like you, 25 years old, imagine you're... Yeah, I actually, I actually like playing video games, especially the uh, violent ones. The violent ones, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just like... Why would you say this? <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Like, from last time, if you, if you watched the last one... His lawyer told him to stop answering questions. Oh. Like to uh, let out all my urges that's, into the that's, TV screen. That's why they're there, right? Do you, what oh, good. Tell the detective that you have violent urges. That's going to help. But, uh, what other ones do you play? I played Halo a lot in the yeah. past. Okay, all right. That's more of a sci-fi kind of futuristic stuff. It's not... I wouldn't say Halo is terribly violent. I mean, you're, you're killing Martians and things like that. At least you're not killing other humans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you play um, uh, Grand Theft Auto? I played it a couple of times uh, uh, on someone else's Xbox. I don't actually own. I've never actually owned any copies of Grand Theft Auto. Mm -hmm. So, as far as being a gamer, how would you classify yourself? Are you uh, like a I would big classify gamer? myself as a hardcore gamer. Hardcore gamer. So, in terms of hours spent during the day playing video games how often would you how many hours would you spend i would say an average of uh, five hours per day oh okay all right okay and that's that seems reasonable that's uh, your age and probably do the same even thing. given even given my course loads okay and so that's with school yes so okay so and you were full-time yes yeah and then you're in a computer degree yes. program right which is i imagine intense yes like hard work yes right? have you always been I'm, and I'm, I'm, I'm saying this because I've got a, uh, I've got a nephew of mine who's actually uh, in uh, BC right now at the University of Victoria, and he's in a uh, uh, computer engineering program. So I don't know if computer engineering is the same or not. There's an overlap, but it's not the same thing as computer programming. It's not okay, okay. Um, but his course load is intense, and it's 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 highly uh, uh, mathematical. A lot of math 
involved, a lot of equations, a lot of problem solving. I never actually had to do that much math in really? my program. It was mostly a coding. Coding. Oh, so you write a lot of code? Yes. Now, do you write, uh, what, uh, what type of language do you write? I've used uh, C, C++, C, C++, Java. And Java would be web-based? Java is really for, for writing no, code? No. Uh, uh, for websites? Java is more generic. Yeah. He's confusing Java and JavaScript here, but I got to give him points. For a guy with his much gray hair, I say with my own, uh, I think he's probably earned it more legitimately than I do. It runs in my family. But uh, being able to follow, I give him points for that. Yeah, okay, but C++ is the is the, the more popular coding for computer programs. Yes. Yeah, yeah okay. And uh, how, what made you decide to get interested in that? Well, I was kind of a nerd in high school, and so, I, so uh, took, I. <laughs> and I took a, a course uh, on uh, computer programming. In, uh, I took one course that was programming in high school, and after that, I decided I really liked coding, and I wanted to uh, uh, sign up for a um, programming a program in uh, college. Really? And then you just carried it through, and you got into Seneca, and, and yes. things were good. Now, was it difficult getting into Seneca? Now, the detective's got to be aware that there's likely a possibility of a not criminally responsible by reason of mental disorder defense here, which most people sort of colloquially call an insanity defense. So he's probably going through all of this in some detail to try to undermine that later on, because if they can say, hey, listen, you're capable of doing all this high level coding, you're capable of, you know, holding down you know, all of these tasks and so forth that, uh, you know, clearly you've got to have at least some faculties with you. You know, you're handling difficult logical puzzles and so forth. So <clears throat> I don't think this is just rapport building. I don't think this is just harmless, sort of keep him talking, and then we'll get to more important things. Uh, I suspect that's why he's laying this out, and I suspect that's going to be used in that fashion uh, at trial. Did you, obviously I, I, I had to... The only difficult part was ensuring that I had high grades right, at near right, the end right. of high school. Right, 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 right. So did you finish grade 12 or did you go on to grade 13? I'm trying to think. I finished grade 12. Okay, they didn't have grade 13 when you... Like no, they've already, they already discontinued that long uh, before that's, I started high school. That's what I thought, yeah, that's what I thought. Because when I, when I first... I'm from BC. I grew up out west in Victoria. I don't know if you... Have you ever traveled the, the country? I've never uh, been to uh, BC before. Never been to BC. Have you been anywhere else in, in, in Canada? I've been to uh, Quebec. You've been to Quebec to, to visit? Yes. Okay, but have you been, have you traveled anywhere else? No. Okay. Well, yeah, BC is, uh, in BC, uh, well, no, this is back in 1984 when I graduated, uh, and it's still to this day, they only have grade 12. But when I moved out here when I was 19, 20 years old, they had, is what they, they call it, OAC, they could hold AC, which was a grade 13 which was like a, a university prep year. So if you were going to go on to university or college, you'd take uh, grade 13. But then they discontinued that. But I can't remember I can't remember exactly when they did that. So I assume that maybe perhaps you were still part of that. So you, you get into Seneca, and it's a how, how many? Is it a two-year program? Four-year program. Four. So were you in your fourth year? The, the, this semester was supposed to be my final semester. Final semester? Yes. And you'd be graduating with a Bachelor of Science? Bachelor of Software Development. Bachelor, bachelor of Software Development. Did you have Did you have tests or anything to complete? Or? I already completed everything. <coughs> so you, you basically, you, you finished? Yes. So when was your last day? When my last day of classes was uh, last Wednesday. Last Wednesday. And so, when would your when would you when would you be told that you would, you would, you would, you had graduated? Like when would your graduation day be? I would have uh, found out my uh, final grades this Saturday. This Saturday. Yes. Okay. So, were you required to do anything between now and Saturday? No. Yeah. So that's it. You're finished. Yes. Wow! Congratulations. Thank you. Good for you. And that's no. That's quite an achievement. Yeah. You got a, a bachelor of science. That's heck a lot more than what I got. I'll tell you that. And if he's convicted, he'll be the most educated person serving a life sentence on his ward, most likely. I mean, there's not a whole lot of education to go around in your average uh, average prison, which is unfortunate. It's just uh, 
people who are sort of on the on that track tend to be people who've had fewer opportunities. Uh, this is an individual who it seems has had a great deal more opportunities. <clears throat> Although his military career was cut short, uh, I'm guessing there are some reasons for that. But this is, uh, I mean, I'd say it's tragic, except it's clear that he's made his own choices, assuming he's convicted on this. It's not, uh, but it just makes you kind of think. I went to university and I, I only, only took, uh, well, I got a diploma in business administration, then I did two years in uh, taking finance, but I never completed it. I never finished my university. I wish I had, but I just, it was, it was a lot of work. I couldn't do it. It was, uh, it was too much. Well, that's good. Wow, that's uh, that's quite an achievement. Have you, um, so, but you hadn't lined anything up as far as a job? Like work I don't wish to answer that. Yeah, okay, all right, okay, I understand, I understand. Really? That's the question you don't want to answer? Okay. Okay. Um, my understanding is you're living at home. You don't live on your own. Am I right? I don't wish to answer that. Okay. Uh, but you have a good relationship with your mom and dad? Yes. Yeah. And has your relationship always been good with your mom and dad? Yes. Okay. And have they been supportive and loving throughout your life? Yes. And. Um, and I'll just note here that this detective is really good because one of the things he does here is that when he encounters this resistance in terms of, I don't want to answer that, and it's a question he doesn't really need the answer to, he's very able to sort of roll off that and play off it, uh, sort of like water off a duck back, duck's back here because it's really easy for less experienced interrogators to start getting sort of their ego involved and start getting angry and upset. And sometimes they can sort of shut down the interview on themselves when they start pushing back on that. But he's able to sort of roll it along to something that he knows that isn't going to be a problem and to get the accused talking again. Um, this is demonstrative of a, a high degree of skill. This guy is not, he's not a slouch. He's not somebody who they just, you know... This is, I'm sure they sort of looked around and said, who is our top guy? And this is him. And quite frankly, you know, compared to a lot of the interrogations I've seen, I'm just impressed at a lot of the very subtle, you know, subtle maneuvers he's got. It's one of these things where when somebody's really good at their job and really excellent at it, sometimes they can make it seem so easy that it doesn't look like there's a contest. You know, when you see figure skaters who are just, you know, going effortlessly across the ice and you think, man, I could do that. I don't think most of the interrogators could handle this nearly as well as this guy is. So I just kind of wanted to point that out as just one of those little subtle moments that really shows off, uh, shows off his degree of skill. It just, it it's impressive if you've seen other interrogation videos where they're maybe not as skilled as this guy. Were there any difficulties in your life growing up with your mom and dad? No. No. Uh, what about with school? Were there difficulties with, uh, with, with school growing up? No. No? Uh, and so when I talk about that, I'm talking about like the school curriculum, you know, the, you know, going to school, learning and, and, and uh, you know, completing your assignments and things like that. Were there any issues? No. Okay. What about the students? Uh, no, I never had any issues. Never had any issue with any of the students or anything no. like that? No. Um, uh, and, I, and I say this uh, because you know sometimes these things are important. Uh, were you, um, how were you treated by the other students? I was treated well. You treated well, okay. Um, and that's a wonderful question because either way he answers, it's it's gold for the detective. Like this is one of those questions where you sort of put the other person on, on the horns so that if they pick one horn, it's going to hurt them. And if they pick the other horn, it's going to hurt them. Uh, if he says I was bullied, I was mistreated. Well, that goes to motive. It goes to the detective sort of version of events. It helps establish sort of why this happened in a way that becomes comprehensible to a jury and makes it more likely that they're going to convict. If he says, I'm, I was treated well, then we've got a situation where it's, 
you know, they can say, oh, well, this is all the more shocking. You know, he doesn't have this, uh, you know, trauma and so forth. Uh, those kinds of questions are quite nasty. Uh, they're nasty in this scenario, but in this scenario, you can just say, my lawyers told me not to answer any questions and shut it down. On the stand, they're even nastier. So good defense lawyers and good crown prosecutors will look for opportunities to ask a question like that. And so just to call that out here. Did you have any difficulties with any particular group of students? No, no. Uh, what about difficulties with uh, uh, girls in particular? No. No, no, no difficulties with girls at all? No, no, not at all. How do you feel about... Uh... And you can see here that the detective, he's able to sort of shade the, the accused's answer by applying a little bit of his own editorialization. Oh, none at all. Okay, sure. That'll happen in court too. That's a tactic that, you know, lawyers will use on occasion, you know, when you're cross-examining or when you're examining a witness where you can sort of editorialize very gently because you can't go too far with that or the court will say, hey, you're putting answers into the accused mouth. But uh, yeah, that's interesting to watch here because of course this video goes in front of a jury or in front of a judge and that sort of thing can affect them girls in general i i'm attracted to them oh you are okay okay so you're heterosexual yes would it be fair to say that okay that's that's important um have you ever had a relationship with a with a, a female i don't wish to answer that okay and do you think that a juror watching this is going to say, oh, he doesn't want to answer that? I guess that doesn't mean anything. No, the juror watching this is going to infer something from what he's not answering. His non-answers hurt him here, but the reason why they hurt him is because he's choosing to answer other questions. Your non-answers can't hurt you if you just, you know, don't answer anything. And in theory, a juror isn't supposed to take anything about that. They're supposed to say, oh, he's got a right not to answer that question. Fine. But juries don't necessarily think like that. It's, I think it's going to hurt him. I think that a jury is going to read into those uh, non-answers here, even if they're told that they shouldn't. Um, in terms of females, I mean, females and women, because you're 25, you're a young man, right? We'll call them women. So the use of the word females here, I suspect, is not accidental. Um, it's kind of insulting when you think about it, but he's kind of delving into the accused's mindset and trying to use language to relate to the accused. So this probably doesn't tell us anything about what the detective thinks or how the detective thinks. It tells us that he's playing a, a very carefully orchestrated game here. Um, in terms of your feelings towards women in general uh, how would you describe that I would say that sometimes I am a bit upset that they choose to uh, date uh, obnoxious men instead of uh, uh, gentlemen yeah, yeah. again this is a terrible answer to give but also I'm sorry, you know, if you're sitting there saying they're choosing to date obnoxious men in term instead of gentlemen, and he's probably thinking of himself here, I'm kind of thinking that maybe those other people aren't wearing a white bunny suit sitting in a cell for 10 counts of murder. There's probably some women in the past who are probably going, man, am I glad I said no to that. So yeah, I the sort of twisted mindset that we get here is not going to be helpful to him, but it starts illustrating the, the thinking here. So I, 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 um, I have a, um, well, I got involved in this as well, I'll talk about it later, but um, I, I um, so my understanding is um, you, you have some problems with women who date obnoxious men. Right? Yes. And these guys, I'm thinking you're, t you're talking about the fellows who are allowed uh, uh, arrogant, um, uh, generally uh, uh, outgoing and popular with girls, 
Yes. Is that what you're talking about? Yes. Okay. Um, and you have a problem with the women that date these fellows? Yes. Why is it that you have a problem with, with the women? Because I feel that uh, it's illogical to be uh, dating such men when they could be dating uh, gentlemen instead. Right, right, right. That makes sense. So he's saying that makes sense. I don't think the detective actually empathizes with this at all. He's just getting the accused to talk about this because this, for the detective, is is gold. This is fantastic. This is they're starting to get to where he wants to bring the the accused. Now, we've seen the accused not answer some questions, and you might say, "Well, why is he talking about this?" And it's probably because the accused seems to be a fairly socially isolated sort of individual. Uh, there seems to be some special needs issues here. Um, I don't want to speculate uh, too heavily as to what we're looking at, but there does seem to be something going on in terms of that. And I suspect he's fairly socially isolated. I suspect that he doesn't have many opportunities to talk about this. And one thing that really comes up a lot is you get people who really want to talk because... They just have never had the opportunity to sort of, they want to tell their side or they want to unburden themselves of stuff. And the detective is very good about making this feel like a safe place where he can unburden himself and where he can sort of share these ideas and, you know, that the detective is receptive to them, that he's willing to listen, that he's, you know, maybe even getting convinced by them. And... You know, this is the farthest thing from a safe sort of place to talk. A safe place to talk doesn't typically have a door that locks from the outside or, you know, a recording camera or... And you're not typically in a bunny suit unless that's something you're into. So, the... Uh, Mr. Manassian here has really been drawn in and is really... Uh, sort of fallen under the spell of the interrogator here. He's exactly where the detective wants him to be, and that's a very dangerous place for him. I mean, uh, and I've seen that because I've grown up, and I'll tell you one of the issues that I had as a kid growing up because I was. Uh, this is going to say you might not believe me, but believe I was. I wasn't a very big kid growing up. I was. I don't think I'm going to believe him here, but let's let's let him talk. Actually, very very small, uh, and it took me a long time to. To, 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 to grow and uh, so as a result uh, the I, you know I, I was kind of ostracized you know what I mean by ostracized I was kind of cast aside cast aside yeah, yeah. and uh, or uh, I left out like I wouldn't get picked for teams you know or anything like that you know I was always kind of the last guy yeah, you ever see those uh, those uh, you know those television shows where you know all the kids are lined up and they're getting picked for you know the teams and there's always one guy left out at the end yeah that, that was me I was that was I was that guy, and, uh, and and I never I was never uh, very popular with uh, women girls in, in, in school, and uh, and that kind of actually went on through uh, the early part of my my, my adulthood uh, until I started you know getting taller and uh, mature, right? But uh, I understand exactly what you meant because I was as a kid growing up I was um, you know I mean I was like any other kid. Any other young man, right? They would look at uh, uh, attractive girls, and I knew I was probably just as smart, if not smarter, than some of the clowns they were dating. But because, for whatever reason, I didn't have what it took, they wouldn't, you know, they wouldn't date me because I think because I was short. So he's telling a story here that he thinks that the accused is going to relate to. You know, I was smarter than these other guys, but. You know, they just wouldn't go with me because of my physical attributes. Now, I mean, he became a police officer at some point here. I don't think that the notion that he was sort of physically, un, you know, unimpressive is likely to be accurate, although I can't say for sure. But he may well be crafting this from, for instance, having observed other people at his high school or from movies or the like. But he's presenting this to the accused because he expects that the accused is now going to feel sympathy, that they're on the same level, that they, you know, this guy understands me. And it's a really, you know, if you ever find yourself thinking, oh, good, this detective understands me. And, you know, sometimes I get people who, uh, you know, they've been arrested, they've gotten out of cells and they say, oh, it's OK. I talked to the, you know, I talked to the police officer 
and I really think he understood where I was coming from. And I just go, oh, no, no. Because the person comes out of the interview thinking, I really felt like he related to me. And what that means is that the accused just got played and his, was absolutely destroyed in that interview. So be aware of that. They wouldn't date me and they'd end up dating you know, the tall jocks and the other, you know, the good looking fellows. Is that what you're talking about? Yes. Yeah, then, yeah, then you kind of resent these girls. Now, if I had to put square money on it, I would say he was probably the guy that the girls were dating and not the other one. But again, just just throwing that out there as a guess. I can't say for certain. Right. Yeah, because, you know, that's kind of a superficial way of uh, deciding you know, who it is. Because you're height go. is an unfair, you can't control your height. Right, exactly. Right, 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 right. What other things can't you control? You can't control... Uh, your looks either exactly so now he's sort of put it back to the accused to let the accused express what things he's dissatisfied with this is giving great information to the detective for how to drive the interrogation going forward and it's starting to get the accused to sort of buy into what's been being suggested as a motive here yeah that's a good point Although you're not a bad looking guy. Thank you. No, you are. You're a good looking guy. You keep yourself well. And you're good, you're fit. You know, you're tall. Yeah. Um, what other things can you control? I'm unaware. I'm, I'm not aware of anything else you can't control. Uh, what about um, like phys physical disabilities, right? Obviously, if you were blind or, you know. Unfortunately, you can't control that. Yeah, you can't control that. That's what I mean. So these are things you can't control or. Um, you know other disabilities you know if you're mentally handicapped or if you uh, you, you know you're you have an amputee or uh... and we can see him sort of circling in on what he wants to land on but i think he wants the accused to actually say it himself so he's kind of you know going all around the point and but he he's just suggesting what he wants the answer to be here uh, you know, there's there's other other things, and I and I and so so does that would would you include that in those those issues that you can't control? Yes. And so uh, so how long have you had this um, this feeling towards uh, women who are attracted to you know this particular type of guy? Ever since I uh, started uh, college. Ever since you started college. Okay. And, and did it, did it, was it was it something that occurred as a result of a single incident like did, did was there one particular moment in your life where it sort of struck home this was a problem or was it just a uh, on halloween of 2013 i was attending a house party mm -hmm. and i uh, walked in and attempted to uh, socialize with some uh, girls uh, however they all uh, laughed at me and uh, held the arms of the uh, big guys instead does he think this is helpful? You know, that he's providing sort of specific instances that might have cultivated a grudge, that he's talking about how he's got animosity towards women in general. I mean, it's, there's not quite parody in terms of genders on the bench, but it's getting closer. And so let's say the odds are, you know, 40, 45% that his justice, when he's tried, is female. Is that, you know, something you really want to have expressed on camera that you have a grudge towards women if your judge is a woman? I don't think so. Uh, similarly, that's going to apply to several of your jurors. Several of your jurors are likely to be women. It's unlikely that your lawyer is going to manage to, you know, keep women off the jury. And I don't think they're even likely to try. <laughs> it's just... Yeah, I, this is never a good idea. And it shows that the accused is making very bad decisions because the detective is very skilled at getting him to make those bad decisions. Really? Yeah. Well, that's kind of rude. And how did that make you feel? I felt uh, very angry. Yeah. 
that they would, because I considered myself a supreme gentleman, I was angry that, that they would um, give their love and affection to obnoxious brutes. Really. Supreme gentleman is a turn of phrase that he really ought not to have used here because I suspect that we're going to see some expert evidence as to what and who that refers to because that's not an, an empty saying. Um, I suspect we're going to, I haven't, as I said, I, I'm watching this sort of live here. I'm not, I haven't gone through this in advance, but I suspect they're going to get to sort of the key aspects of that particular turn of phrase. But that's a hell of a sentence to drop in a police interrogation. <laughs> oh. And so it was at that particular moment, and that was sort of the defining moment that made you think that, you know, this is this is wrong and, you know, these people are, you know, yes. are unfairly treating you in, in, in the way that they were. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And that makes sense. I appreciate you talking about that. That, uh, that says a lot. And um, so, so from that point on, what, uh, what, 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 what did you start doing? I uh, started thinking that it's unfair that um, certain uh, guys will not get any uh, love and affection from girls. Okay. And, and what, 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 what do you mean by certain guys? Such as me, that are uh, that are very uh, nice and uh, act gentlemanly. Right, right, right. Are there other guys? Did you find other guys uh, are in the same? There, are, I know of several other guys over the internet who uh, feel the same way, but I know they are. I would consider them uh, too cowardly to uh, act on their anger. Oh, now there's a sentence. Um, yeah, do you think that's going to get played? You know, those other guys are too cowardly to act on their anger. Ooh. But you can see sort of how the thinking here could have developed. You know, he's got these, uh, you know, he's got attraction towards people. He's getting, you know, denied and he's spitting himself up into, you know, this angry sort of thing. When really, you know, can you think that there might be other reasons why he might be being rejected here? Uh, his affect is very stilted. I suspect he's having a, a great deal of trouble managing social and, you know, scenarios. But when you're sort of trying to outwardly project as nice, but inwardly you're this seething kettle of rage like that, it's not going to go well. This... I mean, this is a tragedy in the Greek sense of, you know, his qualities lead towards a, a result that is bad. And, uh, but you can see sort of how the thinking goes here. And I don't say this to sympathize with him. You know, it's, it's just, it's worthwhile understanding the thought processes here. And, but that was a hell of a comment to make. I'm going to bet that that one is going to be played and is going to be repeated. I bet that one makes it into a closing argument. Ooh. Oh, okay. And so on the internet, what, where, where, what are you talking about in terms of? Uh, specifically, uh, certain boards on uh, 4chan. Oh, okay. 4chan, I'm familiar with. And I actually think that the detective was kind of surprised there that he got that particular comment. I don't think he was expecting to land on something so useful at that point. He's trying to get him to talk about 4chan, and about sort of the incel communities. And uh, that's one of those comments that's just, that I'm betting the detective is also going to be able to make good use of it later down the road. So that's... Uh, Such as R9K and uh, Paul. Okay, so describe 4chan to me. What is, what is, what is 4chan specifically? It's an image board uh, right. where uh, people uh, can anonymously make any post they want. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the three boards that I have uh, uh, frequented are uh, B, which is the random board. Okay. Yeah. P O L or Poll right. stands for politically uh, incorrect. Okay. And uh, R nine K, which uh, is basically means R nine thousand. It's uh, in effect they're saying we're all robots. Anyone who uh, messages on that board. 
Okay, so those are the three boards that you you you, you go to. Yes. To to uh, is it fair to say you chat? Yes. You chat. So you chat with other similar minded people. Yes. Right. So 4chan is a website, and within 4chan there are these messaging boards. Yes. And they're individual boards specific to like minded people. Yes. And I can tell you this: there's no way that this detective does not know what 4chan is. Because, you know, he's investigating, he said he's from sex crimes. Well, 4chan is going to be relevant to, to his job description. There's no way he does not have a working understanding of what 4chan is and what sort of content there is and what structure it is and so forth. So right now he's kind of playing it, playing dumb a bit to draw the accused out and get the explanation from him. And uh, how many boards would there be in total on 4chan? There are about 50 different boards on 4chan, but, uh, but most of them are actually uh, unrelated to the uh, to B or 19 or or pool. Therefore, I don't, I don't bother going on them. Right, right. Because they because uh, in fact, if you try, if I try to talk about topics that I was talking about on those other boards, my posts would get deleted. Oh, okay. All right. So there's moderators. Yes. Uh, who, who monitor the, the conversations and they, you know, they, they kind of police the the conversations and if you're not part of the group conversation, they, they, they kick you out? Yes. Oh, okay, that, that makes sense. So when did you first start going on the 4chan? Since uh, 2014. Oh, okay. All right. How did you learn about 4chan? Uh, I was informed about it uh, by a friend at college. Oh, okay. All right. And did, was he on it as well? Or? Yes. Okay. What's his name? I don't wish to okay. answer. Okay, I understand. That friend is really appreciating that reply right now. But nevertheless, it's a, it's a friend who's on 4chan. Was he in the same? Uh, was he in the same uh, chat rooms? Yes. Oh, okay. All right. And so, you, would you have conversation with him in those chat rooms? Yes. Oh, okay. All right. And so, how many other people would be in the in these in these three particular chat rooms you talked about? It doesn't actually tell you how many are in there at once because it doesn't, as a software, it's not actually a chat room. It's more like a message board mm. where anyone can post at any time by simply going to the thread, okay. but they don't have to stay there. Oh, I see. So it's not live, it's not live chat. No. It's a, it's a thread. So when you say it's a thread, it's a... It's essentially like a forum. Right. So you make a statement and then somebody will... Uh, answer or they will reply to that's your statement correct and you've got you or they might re reply to the original poster or what is known as OP right okay I see okay okay and so the the, the, the general content of these three forums is it, am I using the right word forum or, or ch image board image board so the, 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 the what what's the general uh, 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 the topic within these message boards? Well, on a B, the, uh, or random, the general topic is random. It's literally any random uh, um, topic. Mm -hmm. On R9K, it's, they uh, call us uh, space robots. Okay. Uh, the topic is usually uh, frustrations at an inability to lose one's virginity, specifically for young males. Okay. Uh, poll, which is politically incorrect, mm -hmm. is the general topic is basically political discussions with an alt-right bias. Political discussions with an alt-right, so you're, uh, you're, you're ultra-conservative. Or you're yes. the, oh, like a, you know, in the American uh, definition, you'd be, you'd be you know, ultra-Republican. Yes. Okay, so you, what would your, <coughs> what would your political views be in the alt-right uh, uh, message board? I actually don't have any uh, political views. I only uh, uh, the only reason I have talked with them was just because I enjoyed their uh, style of uh, conversation. Okay. And what was the style of conversation? Uh, it was very uh, blunt and honest. So when what would it be? What would it typically focus around, or what would the what would the, tip, the typical conversations contain? Uh, red pill truths about uh, why uh, women uh, choose to. A date uh, obnoxious men. Date the chads. Yeah. The chads of this world. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Basically, the state. You hear the detective go, oops, there? And the oops is because he just revealed that he knows more than he meant to reveal. He's, he's been playing it sort of as the, uh, the interested student. 
And he just dropped terminology that maybe shows that he's been doing his homework. Because of course he's been doing his homework because the detective isn't going to walk in here blind. Uh, I suspect that, you know, as soon as the arrest was made, that this detective was, sort of, you know, head down into books, into getting ready for this exact interrogation moment. You know, he would have been focused and diligent and sort of bringing all, you know, anything that he didn't know, he'd be sort of packing into his mind, getting ready to, you know, ready to go in this moment. He's preparing for an intellectual battle. So he's just kind of inadvertently tipped his hand a little bit. And that's, that's an error. That's, that's a mistake he made. And you can hear him say, oops, because he didn't mean to tip, uh, tip that off. And a slightly savvier accused might have gone, wait a minute, this doesn't fit with what's been going on. Stacy's going for the challenge. Exactly. The Stacy's are the, yeah, the, you know, the, the, the dizzy, dumb girls dating the, the goofy, you know, jocks. Yeah. Right, 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 right. So you call them Stacy's and Chad's. Yeah. I've heard, I've heard that term before. Uh, and so that's in the alt right. Yes. That conversation takes place in the alt right as well. Yes. Uh, does do other things take place in the alt right? Uh, um, or red pill. Uh, so, some uh, some uh, um, alt right members consider them to be, themselves to be uh, red pilled. What does that um, mean? Is that like a, a matrix? Uh, reference? Actually, it is. In fact, that term was actually in fact um, uh, came up as a reference to matrix. Right. Taking the red, you can either take the red pill or you can take the blue pill. Right. And some of them, some alt right members even consider them to be those to be a uh, black pill, which in, a sen in, a, in a essence means they're a uh, MGTOW, men going their own way. Oh, okay, all right, okay, all right, okay. You're right. Yep. Okay. So and so the so the conversations are surrounding. Uh, so in those three message boards, they're all basically this, or maybe in the, I shouldn't say all three, but in the two message boards, the alt right and the. R9K. R9K. And we call ourselves uh, space robots there. Space robots. But the conversations tend to be focused around um, uh, fellows who have uh, been un unable to lose their virginity due to the stasis of this world in the chats. Yes. Right. And, and you can see how expertly the detective has got the accused talking about things that he really ought not to be talking about here. Like, he should have known better. And... It's because he seems to have bought into the persona and sort of the, uh, I guess, the situation that the, the detective is presenting here of, you know, you have a, a possible confederate here. I might be willing to help you out because, you know, you've told me all these things. Now, he never says, I could help you out because that might cause him some problems. But he sort of implies, oh, you know, maybe I'm on board with all this. Uh, I, I've done a little bit of um, uh, reading, and I know a little bit about um, involuntary uh, celibacy. Ce ce celibacy, right? So being celibate, involuntarily yes. celibate. What does that mean? That means, and celibacy means uh, uh, someone who never perform has a sexual intercourse. Right. Uh, involuntary celibacy means this wasn't your choice. You uh, essentially are uh, have been thrown into true forced loneliness, and you're unable to lose your virginity. Right. This is especially uh, painful for uh, young males. Right, right, right. That makes sense. And there's other are there not other websites that cater to this group of people as well? Forever Alone. Have you ever heard of them? I have heard of the uh, Forever Alone uh, subreddit. And subreddit, subreddit. Have you heard, you've heard of those? Okay, yes. Okay. And would it, is it fair to say Forever Alone is a is a is a forum within subreddit? It is a subreddit. That's it, the, the definition of subreddit is uh, basically a section of Reddit. Right. 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 Yes. Exactly. Right. So it would be like the 4chan. That the kind of the, in a way. Yeah. Okay. All right. Are you on Forever Alone? Yes. You're on that as well. Yes. Okay. And what other what other sites are you on? And do you think that was accidental? I'm pretty sure the detective already knew the answer to that question before it was asked. I don't. I can't uh, recall other sites off the bat at the moment. What's your What's your username in uh, Forever Alone? I don't wish to answer that. Okay. Well, what about 4chan? 
There is no username because you're always anonymous. You don't register on 4chan. Well, and that's what makes 4chan popular. Yeah, because it makes it very easy and you can uh, uh, hide behind a computer screen. Right, 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 okay. And so when you're on the internet, where are you typically when you're when you're accessing these websites? Are you at home? Yes. Yeah, okay. And have you got a computer at home? You're, obviously you do. Yes. Okay. Um, uh, do you ever access them with any other type of device? So here, this might be a good breaking point here. Uh, so... I got to I got to say like I'm continually impressed by the detective here and just how how skillfully is it what he's doing and you know I shake my head at what's going on in terms of the accused here because you know as much as you know I don't have terrible sympathy for somebody who's been accused of you know very serious offenses and I don't I'm not aware actually I should check into this as to whether uh, they're running a factual defense at trial, or if it's just a defense of, uh, you know, if there's criminal responsibility or the like, I should look into that. So I guess I'll do that and then report back a little bit in the next video. But it just, the stuff they're getting him to say is stuff that, you know, he should never be talking about in a police interrogation in a situation like this. And had the detective not done that groundwork, because we're, you know, we're more than an hour in to the actual, you know, interrogation. And you'll notice that the detective hasn't asked him a single question along the lines of, did you do it? Hasn't gotten that far. What he's doing is he's building up all the things so that when the accused says, no, I didn't do it, he can say, well, obviously you did. Let's go through all the reasons and let's go through and use all of these answers as a weapon. But all of these answers are themselves incredibly damaging at a trial uh some of the stuff he's already said has caused him tremendous uh is going to cause him tremendous grief so that's you know i the reason why i sort of sigh here is that i think of all the people i've you know dealt with and you know think of past interviews and there's a lot of people who you know, may not have actually done anything and they don't make any admissions, you know, to actually committing the offense in, you know, in the course of an interrogation. But all of the other things that they do admit to end up being really problematic for them. Uh, sometimes it's a situation where the Crown wouldn't have had enough evidence to go to trial or even sometimes that they wouldn't have had enough evidence to lay charges, but for the statement that gets made. And so in those cases, a statement there that might contain some little detail that just happens to match up with the allegations can end up costing them, you know, lots and lots of money and can end up, you know, potentially convicting them, even if they don't admit to anything. And even in some cases where they haven't done anything, because as much as, you know, I hate to admit it, wrongful convictions do happen in our system. You know, we fight as much as we can to try to prevent that, but it's absolutely a thing that happens. Um, after I'm done this uh, series, I intend to cover a video that, uh, or cover a case that illustrates a wrongful conviction. Anyway, uh, so I guess that's part three. Uh, we'll pick up and see where this goes next time. I sort of stopped it here because it looks like they're moving on to a new topic, and so that makes for a good break point. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope this has been interesting and educational. I want to thank $50 Patreon supporters, George and Demo, $30 Patreon supporter, Steve Browning, and $10 supporters, my buddy Keith, Process Eng, Stephen Larson, Mark D, General Counsel of the CCFR, John Robinson, Tim Rogers, Roy Haddock, Frackles Dack, Jean-Alexandre Tessier, Cameron Johnson, Sir Goat, Sights and Arms Limited, Chaba Hollow, Peter H, Craig Kwan, Akin Coxall, North Central Process Service, Toys Are For Boys, Ian Vaughn, Milan Vrekic, Terence Griffiths, Doug Thompson, Brad Crooker, Jason Harrington, Lee Kiso, Mark Stout, Michelle Stotzel, Scott Sweetman, Mike Rhodes, Alvaro Bataille, DF, Stacey Cartmel, Tactical Advantage TV Canada, Ian S., Dave Leslie, Juan, Donald Duncan, Stefan Conquist, Darren Duell, Kevin Fleet, Sean Crane, Ian Hutchinson, and Rory. Thank you again. Uh, your support makes this possible because, as mentioned, this one uh, is one that gets on YouTube's nerves because they don't like 
uh, discussion of sensitive topics. So, but your support makes it possible for me to cover things that uh, maybe YouTube doesn't like as much. So once again, thank you. I really do appreciate it. I'll see you next time. And I hope this has armed you with knowledge.